Bronx, New York, February 25th, 2013, part one. Years ago, Bashad McLean was placed in a foster home. His mother was battling a drug dependency. I'm sure she didn't want to, but at the time, there wasn't anyone who could care for her young son. Though he was young, he seemed to hold a resentment for this towards her. Bashad had his share of troubles as well in the foster home. He was responsible for starting several fires. He was labeled a very troubled child. When Bashad turned 18, he would come to live with his mother. He also had a younger brother by this time at the home who had Down syndrome named Nasir. Tanya Bird was happy. Her and Bashad was reunited and he was back at home. But little did she know, he was still holding a grudge against her all these years later. After time, he became quite overbearing, frightening, and disrespectful. Neighbors in the apartment complex would hear through the walls, Tanya and Bashid verbally arguing. Tanya caught him looking at the internet for tips on how to cover up a murder. He He'd even created a MySpace page called Kill the Bitch Tanya. Those close to Tanya said she was starting to become very frightened of her son. I don't know what to do. But she loved That's him just the same. He was a legal adult now. They would plead with her, tell him to leave. Tanya, tell him to She go. really didn't feel safe. Maybe she was trying to make up for those lost years that he was in foster homes. She really felt it was her fault because of her drug abuse. His aunts, his siblings, even his own father knew that something wasn't right about Bashad. They warned Tanya to stay away, but it was her son. She just wouldn't. He's my baby. Bashad had been medically diagnosed with schizophrenia. Sometimes he failed to take his medicine. When he didn't, he would say, quote, demons are following me, unquote. <laughs> In 2010, Bashad was even arrested for attacking two police officers. It seemed he stayed you, in some type of trouble. Tanya had became fed up. She started to suspect that Bashid was physically abusing his little brother. I think he's abusing. She told him to get out. Find somewhere get else to stay. Out. Put me out. It was a known fact that but she thought that Nasir was getting Not all the like attention. You. It would have to be pointed out to Bashid that he was getting attention too, but he felt his I mother love loved too, Nasir more. She loved all her children just the same. She was living with both her sons. One of her sons had serious mental issues and the other one had special needs, but Tanya was doing the best that she could do. On that faithful night, was it about an argument? Was it about him smoking too much marijuana? Or did she tell him to seek employment? Did she tell him to grow Ooh, up, a man. be a man? I am a man? Whatever it was, Tanya, she didn't see this coming. No one saw this coming, but she didn't deserve this. She didn't deserve this. What was she thinking about? What did she say? Did it feel almost oh, like a release? He would plunge the knife in her neck and stab her multiple times. 
The bed she lied on was soaked with her blood. He would go and purchase a black and decker jigsaw with her own money. He would come back and he began to chop her up and put her in trash bags and suitcases. He even decapitated her head and posed for pictures with it. <laughs> he took a host of pictures of his mother's head in his hand like he was proud or something. Do you know he wasn't even in that apartment alone? His young brother Nasir was asleep the entire time. His vengeance was just on his mother. His friend, who he had met in jail prior, 26-year-old William Harris, was also there in the apartment. Harris would tell the court later that Bashid was yelling and screaming at him to help, that he turned him into, quote, spaghetti, unquote. That's what he, he said. He said Bashid like made his insides spaghetti. feel like spaghetti. He had no choice but to help Bashid because of his condition. The cameras at the Morrison apartments would catch and show Bashad and William walking up and down the hallway carrying the suitcases and trash bags that was filled with his chopped up mother. They would sporadically place her body parts all around the area in the Bronx. Grizzly days were ahead. A man walking a dog would find a part Someone would find a leg. Police were called. Bashad was covering his story up. She left with an ex-boyfriend. She just left. A family member would file a missing persons report when Tanya hadn't shown up Where for work. Is she? This wasn't like Tanya. She would have never left her six-year-old. Her six-year-old depended on her solely. The police would obtain... Bashad's cell phone. In them would be the grisly pictures that he took of his mother's mutilated head. Who could he was arrested, this? and so was William Harris. First, he said he didn't do it. Then he said, quote, If I didn't chop her, someone else would have. Unquote. He even tried to say his friend killed his mother. When the cops asked him, what about your friend? Are you not upset with him? He would say, quote, not really. Everyone has to die. He would continue to say things like that. He felt he was obligated to chop her up. He said, you're a coward. If you can kill someone, but you can't chop them up. What was wrong with this young man? How could you murder your own mother in this demented way and think it's okay? He would actually say he didn't do anything wrong. He did a little did stint in Bellevue Hospital. His lawyers would say Everyone he was having die. a psychotic episode. He hadn't taken his medicine. They would even say he should be acquitted. The Daily News had asked, was he cruel or crazy? That's what everyone wanted to know. His friend, the inmate turned friend outside. Well, William Harris, for the dissecting and the disposing of Tanya Bird's body, he would get four years, and he is a free man. Now it was time for 
Bashid McLean's sentence. Before he was handed down his sentence, his family got to speak. The ones who loved Tanya, the ones who warned Tanya, the ones who couldn't believe this happened to Tanya. Some of them forgave. Some of them said that they couldn't forget. Some of them wanted to know why. Why? They talked about old times. They said they still loved him. They were still grieving. They really didn't know what to do. This is not something that you just experience every day. Now it was time for Bashid to finally say something before the judge would hand him his sentence. He said, what I did to my mother what I did to wasn't my mother, called for. Wasn't I live with that. For, and I'll live with that. Whatever, Whatever sentence, sentence y'all, y'all give me doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. It was something, it was something that, that, happened. that happened. I did it. I did I'm it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Bashad McLean would receive 25 years to life. I am a man. 